Welcome to the Courageous Entrepreneur Show. This is the show that shares information and inspiration to help you break free from self-doubt, limiting beliefs and disempowering patterns, and break through to create the thriving, successful business you dream of and deserve. I'm your host, Winnie Anderson. The show features interviews with entrepreneurs who have overcome amazing challenges to create success on their terms and experts who share insight and practical information to help you achieve your big mission. The show is available in both video and audio formats in a variety of platforms, including iTunes, the Google Play Store, iHeartRadio, on YouTube, and on my website at winnieanderson.com. If you like what you hear, I hope you'll share the show with others, and I hope you'll become a fan of the show on my site at winnieanderson.com slash fans. When you do, you'll get episodes delivered right to your inbox every week, along with information, tips, and resources to help you position and pre-sell yourself as the unique solution provider you are so you can profit from your expertise, all while you build a business in alignment with your faith, beliefs, and values. You know, we solo professionals or micro-firm owners, we wear a zillion hats, and we're always trying to juggle multiple important responsibilities, including marketing, enrolling new clients, servicing existing clients, product creation, and of course, we'd like to have a life in addition to having a business, right? That's what we went into business for, isn't it? Well, one of the issues we all wrestle with is maximizing the value of every minute that we're working and maximizing our earning potential out of every minute of the day and every ounce of work that we do and information that we create. There are really only a few ways that you can make more money. You can charge more, you can serve more people, you can lower expenses, you can change your billing model, or you can create leverage. For me, creating leverage means building a business that's not just scalable, but that's also one that uses products as a way to attract potential clients. And that means that you're not using up more time in the day to attract that audience, right? They, they use your product, read your book, whatever, and they come to you pre-sold, already leaning towards working with you. You use products, of course, to sell, so you're driving additional revenue from work that you've already done. I'm a big fan of work once, earn revenue multiple ways. So how do you actually do that, though, without making yourself more overwhelmed and exhausted? Well, that's what we're going to talk about with today's guest. Paulette Ensign was looking for a new strategy to expand her reach, attract more and better clients, and position herself as an expert. She had no idea that the simple 16-page booklet full of how-to tips called 110 Ideas for Organizing Your Business Life would sell over a million copies or that it would be reprinted in multiple languages and formats all without spending a penny in advertising. The success she had with the booklet led others to want to know her secrets to convert their knowledge into how-to tips-based information products. Paulette's business in sharing that information proceeded to grow and as she then developed products and services around the seemingly endless possibilities for using content as marketing tools, revenue streams, or both. She's a former elementary school instrumental music teacher, a past president of the National Association of Professional Organizers, and she's a fellow Jer Jersey girl, although she lives in sunny San Diego. But her online home is tipsproducts.com. So listen in as Paulette shares what exactly is a tip and how it can be of more value to you and your audience than a traditional book can. Ways you can leverage your existing content into tips that generate new clients. How you can profit from selling tips that you used to give away for free. How a tips book or product can differentiate you as a professional. Where to find the content you can use for your tips products. Trust me, you won't have to work hard to find it. And she shares what she knows now that she wishes she knew then when she first started her business. As always, listen all the way to the end where I'll share your cocktail exercise and action step for this episode. All right, Paulette, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so looking forward to having you here. 
Oh, Winnie, it's my pleasure, and thanks for the invitation. We always have such a great time together, don't we? We do. We do. The hardest part will be to stop talking and let, let people go back to their lives, right? <laughs> so let's just go ahead and dive in. One of the challenges that every solo professional has is maximizing their time and maximizing everything that they create, right? Generating as much revenue as possible. So we know that that's what we're trying to do in theory, but of course the devil is in the details. So I think that your approach, you know, when we first met several years ago, I thought, I thought your approach was really unique and I know you've refined it since then. So I would really like to talk about this concept of breaking content down into snackable, easy to consume pieces and then leveraging it in multiple ways. Can you give kind of an overview of this whole concept and how you came up with it? Yeah, I absolutely can. And it was born out of, uh, you know, we talk about it's important to be hungry. Well, literally, I mean, I wanted to make sure I was not hungry. So here's, here's what ended up happening. Uh, Back in, let's see, the last century, doesn't that sound strange? Uh, I'm in my third career right now, and I think I've got at least one more left in me, but I don't know what it is yet. So my first career was, is the only one I have any paper for. The other two I've made up. The first one, I taught string instruments in public elementary schools, and I say that only for the purpose of letting people know that your starting point is rarely your finish line. So when I decided to leave um, teaching string instruments in public elementary schools, I really didn't know what I was going to do next. And interestingly enough, a former neighbor of mine finally accepted an offer I had been making to help her organize the paper that she had accumulated in her home. And it was very early in the profession of professional organizing and productivity. And that was in 1983, actually on April 1st of 1983, that I did that and said, yeah, I like this, through a couple of ads into local newspapers. And that was the beginning of my organizing business. Now, almost a decade later, the economy was zigging and zagging, which is the only way I'm willing to characterize it. <laughs> and the sales cycle was getting longer and longer for the consulting and speaking work that I had been doing. And I had formed these habits called eating and paying the rent, was not eager to break either of them. Yes. As things work, the, the idea of a booklet, a tips booklet, a how-to tips booklet, came whisking past me on the topic of how to improve your business communications. Well, that certainly was what I was about. And I looked at it, and as a former New Yorker, I said very glibly, I could do one of those on organizing tips. Exactly. And then threw that original booklet in the drawer and forgot about it for six months and nothing had changed. So I said, where was that booklet that I had seen that someone had, had put in front of me? Uh, no coincidences, no accidents here. It absolutely was supposed to be presented to me. So I didn't have a clue what I was doing. But as a firstborn, I'm very comfortable not knowing what I'm doing, but if it's not there, I'm supposed to do it. Other people later in the birth order have different viewpoints about things like that, but that's mine. So I gathered together things that I had been saying to clients for about eight years at that point about how to get organized with their paper, time, and space. And the reason it came out to be 110 is that's where I ran out of ideas. <laughs> So I wouldn't do 101 because that's not very original. 110 ideas. And I didn't have any idea at all how I, what I was going to do with it. And I, I have to smile sometimes when people uh, think that they are, quote, ripping me off by copying what I have done because then my famous statement is two words, then what? <laughs> Yeah. Once you've got the ideas together, then what? And that's where the magic sauce has come in and evolved over time. Okay. Because quite honestly, I figured out without having any Paulette Ensign to guide me, which could be the good news or the bad news, <laughs> um, that I've now personally sold well over a million copies of that one set of tips 
in four different languages in a variety of formats without ever spending a penny on advertising. That is crazy. Yeah, I think so too. Crazy. It so amazes me. <laughs> that, it, it, that, it, it, that whole story is so amazing on so many different levels. And yeah. we often do get these, these serendipitous kind of little signals from the universe and stick it yeah. in a drawer or ignore it. No, I can't do that. And then suddenly we, it revisits us. So I'm so glad that you, you managed to remember where you put that original booklet. Oh, no kidding. So, okay. So this 110 ideas for organizing your business life, the primary focus though was to use it as a lead generator, right? So you were going to give this away to attract business. Is that correct? Well, that was one of the two reasons that I had in mind. One was I, yes, I wanted to attract new organizing clients. I also, though, thought, how cool would that be if I could sell some copies of this booklet also? So I was coming at it from two directions at once. Okay. And that if giving it away meant that I would get some more organizing clients, great. And if selling it brought direct revenue, I didn't, again, I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Right. I was throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what would stick. And a lot of that happened without ever leaving my home office. So that meant that, you know, I, I'm one of those ambiverts who's close to the center. And yeah. I'm not as extroverted as some people think I am. So, you know, it, it comes as a surprise to some folks when I go, you know, I'm a little bit anxious about X, Y, and Z about doing this. Mm -hmm. And I go, you? You? With your personality? Go, yep. And I can give you examples of how that has happened. But nevertheless, it is completely possible. I mean, I've had people pay me a whole lot of money, and I've never heard their voice. <laughs> that is so crazy. It's really, really crazy. But I, I think that there are so many things about this whole idea that I think are perfect for the introvert uh, mm -hmm. out there and the ambivert who leans that way as well. Um, and, and those of us who are passionate introverts, and there's yes. a fantastic TEDx talk or TED talk uh, by Dr. Brian Little where he describes himself as a passionate introvert. And as soon as you hear it, you go, Man, that guy busted me. That is so me. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're all looking, I think, for something that is going to help us break the ice. That's really right. it a lot of times, right? So let's then talk about how you managed to sell this. What I can understand that you, okay, well, maybe I could sell it, but I'm going to primarily use this as kind of a lead generator. Where did the sales piece come into? This is such a cool story that every time I even think back on how it happened, it gives me a smile and a whole lot of encouragement that any time I start to pull back and feel anxiety about, do I really, can I do this? How it happens. So... Here's, here's the real crucial piece to this. At that time, in 1991, back in, you know, before dirt was invented. <laughs> yes, um, I was there. <laughs> and, and before the, the internet was a thing. Right. I mean, yes, we had it, but it wasn't a thing. Yeah. And I, when the internet showed up, I went, oh, this is going to be a marketing tool. Yes. Well, it certainly has. Yeah. Um, I digress. I didn't have two nickels to rub together which is an important element to this story because any of us who either literally or we think we don't have any money, you know, either we truly don't or we think we don't. Either way, we get to be right. Exactly. Um, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. So that meant that I had to do a really very short print run of – this booklet. And I happened to be dating a guy at that time who was a printer. And the thing I didn't know, among a whole lot of other things I didn't know, was it was really important that his machinery, his, his printing press, and his cutting tools were at least maintained half decently. Well, his cutting blade wasn't. There were no, there were no um, right, right at corners at all. No 90 degree angles. Anyway, yeah. Anyway, I had 100 copies that I had in print. 
Um, and what I decided to do was to send, first of all, I, I went to the library, you know, like the real library where you go and you sit and you take reference books off the shelf that you can't take yeah. out and directories of magazine editors who had any relationship at all to getting organized. You know, whether it was magazines aimed at entrepreneurs, small business owners, or anybody that had anything to do re remotely with organizing your business. Yeah. And I sent copies of my booklet with a cover letter to those editors and said, I invited them to excerpt from my booklet, provided they were willing to put, put the contact information for how their readers could get their own copy within whatever article that editor would write. Okay. I sold 50,000 copies one at a time <laughs> the first year. Tubs of envelopes were coming in. And, and the interesting thing, too, is that no two excerpts were the same. So it was a really great thing that I had as many tips as I did. Sometimes people want to short circuit that process. Who's to say what's going to resonate for who? Right. Right. So when I saw these envelopes starting to come in in that volume, I realized I had to find a high school kid to help me with the um, back office kind of stuff. I took the money out of the envelopes first because I didn't want to uh, really tempt any, anybody else because there was cash in those envelopes as well as checks. Wow. And for the days. <laughs> not only American money. So there were foreign checks that would come in that at a certain point it almost didn't even make sense for me to cash yeah. because the fee to cash or deposit a foreign check was ridiculous. At any rate, I'm going through these envelopes, and I'm going through, and I'm going one day, I'm going, and, and I bumped the $3 up to $5 of what I was charging. Took a huge risk. So I'm going $5, $5, $5, $1,000, $5, $5. Wait a minute, what was this? <laughs> the person who sent me $1,000 and a check, I, uh, didn't, it didn't line up with anything. So I had to call this person to find out what they thought they were buying. And how that person even found out about it was he saw a nine-line description of the booklet in a professional newsletter. It wasn't even an excerpt. Okay. And he had the vision that was consistent with how I think. And the interesting part, more interesting part about it was that at the time, I was national president of the National Association of Professional Organizers. Wow which meant not that I'm puffing my chest out and gloating about anything other than I had access to all the major office supply manufacturers. However, what I didn't have was knowledge about how corporations work. Okay. So I couldn't speak their language. I was in a foreign country. I also yeah. didn't have more than one offer to make to them. So that meant that do you want to buy this or not? It wasn't, which is our starting point of these different delivery formats of this content? Those were two big things that were missing from my toolkit okay. that I now know like the back of my hand. I know how to talk about marketing campaigns for corporate and how four quarters of the year, whether it's fiscal or calendar year and that we've got so many different formats of the same content which is our starting point where we can talk about having one delivery format for you to use the first quarter of the year a different delivery format the second quarter of the year and so on where it makes the marketing decision maker happy as can be that we allowed for that person to check off the whole year's campaign and where it was cash flow for me that was different than a one-night stand, I believe one-night stands and um, relationship, that there's, there's value in each of them. Um, and that's as far as I'll go with that, not to worry. 
Uh, that's my humor showing. <laughs> and where I can now teach and talk about a continuity program which is a very different situation than a lot of people even have thoughts about. And where we can talk about bulk sales, large quantity, or licensing the downloadables. So all of that happened since 1991. And I now, after the first year of being in the booklet business, or content marketing, which is now the buzz phrase, I now have the ability to focus on that. And I don't sell single copies anymore after that first year. Right. And the only way that at that time I knew about it was this $1,000 check that showed up. Oh, and by the way, the person who bought those bulk copies, his intention that he carried out was he wanted to use the booklet as a promotional tool and as a thank you because and and he was in an industry in a million years i never would have even considered thought about at all it was he was an electrical manufacturer's rep in san juan puerto rico there is nothing about that that ever would have surfaced in my thinking and i'm fairly creative when it comes to stuff like that mm -hmm. and then he said and i love this and i think you will too he said to me, Paula, we want to send this as this year's holiday greeting to our client base and to our prospects and friends of the business because it'll stand out, you know, and it'll be helpful rather than a printed corporate card that who cares. And he said to me, do you mind if we keep your contact information in there? Uh, let me think about that. Uh, that'll be fine. Hmm. <laughs> 2,500 people that wow. I never would have gotten to otherwise. And that did generate additional sales. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about an introvert, a passionate introvert, making sales yeah. that ripple out from one person who found me and bought a single copy first. Right. I mean, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. No, that is spectacular. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, every introvert's dream, I think. <laughs> I think so too. Not, not to mention, even the extroverts would would appreciate that as well. well I think any of us, yeah. you know, it yeah. really was a lovely relationship to start to build for bottom line and to distinguish that electrical manufacturer's rep firm from among a sea of sameness. Yeah, yeah. I think that the issue of thanking people is a real big one that not enough thinking goes into in my opinion yeah. i had a client who was a um a promotional products consultant mm -hmm. he was much more than a pen and pencil guy yeah. he really wanted to solve a problem for you and he right. would come up with the most creative thank you gifts and you know i like to think that that some of that rubbed off on me i'm i'm a big thank you person in general yeah, you are grew up sending cards and, and things like that. And I will often, I'll actually make fudge for people. I just sent a box of uh, Oreo brownie cupcakes as a thank you gift. So if, if it would save me time from, from baking and also provide a potential revenue source, I yeah. think I could get behind that. I've been a very happy recipient of your, That's your right. baking. And, uh, you know, my hips show it, but no, no <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm a happy recipient of that. <laughs> yeah, but I have also been on the receiving end, as you know, of gifts that, let's just say, are not exactly <laughs> differentiating and warm and fuzzy. So I do think that it, it really does behoove all of us to think about how are we not just thanking people, but then making ourselves a little bit more memorable in the yeah. process. So that really is, that's brilliant. And my content was, gene was generic enough that it really could cross party lines industry-wise of how do you organize your business life? Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and you know what I think else is beautiful about that? We talk so much about being narrow in focus. Yeah. And while that is a really outstanding thing to do, there are ways, though, that you can take this narrow focus and at the same time make it a little bit more flexible and open for many other people. And I think that that whole story is a great example of doing that. Yeah. 
So Paulette, while I was prepping for our interview, I actually had a conversation with a client on that same morning that I was doing my research and putting this together. And we were talking about her business and maximizing her revenue because mm -hmm. yes, that, that introvert suffers to get the first sale. We certainly want to maximize every dollar once we've landed that potential oh, yeah. client. So, uh, and, and I was thinking about you obviously because I, I had been prepping. So, we're really talking about taking the content, the knowledge that you have, and you know, earning every possible dollar from every possible mm -hmm. variation from this, aren't we? Yep, absolutely. And there are many variations. In fact, endless possibilities. So, Hard copy and download. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's just step somebody through this. A lot of the listeners have either have books or they've they have a book in their head they have content that they've been creating really probably for years that mm -hmm. I was just talking with a client this morning who said you know I've really been journaling about this for probably a decade mm -hmm. she's easily got a book if not multiple books inside of those journals for her so mm -hmm. let's let's kind of step somebody through you have a book how do you slice and dice that into a booklet and, and begin to start to leverage that in the way that you're talking about? Well, I'm going to back that out for a bit. Okay. So that it makes it even easier for people. Okay. Because the people who have been saying, someday I'm going to write a book and they still have not written a book, there's reasons why. And in some cases, it's better that they don't start with a book and maybe never do the book. Okay. Because it really does depend. I had someone say to me recently, someone who's known of my work for quite a while and has yet to move forward. And that person wanted to write a book based on uh, experiences that, that were had as a caregiver for the parents. Okay. And I said, you who have gone through this process of being a caregiver, think about your stress level and the amount of time you had right zero while you were actively caregiving do you feel that it would be that would it would be appropriate for a caregiver to sit down and read a book and that aha moment occurred right and i said you know that's really much better situation for a manuscript of tips. And you notice that I said it that way rather than a booklet. Yeah. Because very recently in the past yeah, five, six months, I realized that a commonly held perception is, and I've been hearing this from people, is anybody actually printing anymore? The fact is yes. Mm -hmm. And the, also the answer is it depends. Mm -hmm. It depends on the use. It depends on the context. It depends on the age right. of the person on the receiving end. So, yeah, people are still printing, and it depends on yeah. those variables that I mentioned. Yeah. So, if you haven't written a book yet, you may find that it's not going to be a good idea to ever write one, depending on the context yeah. of your content and the age group yeah. of the people that you're reading to. I had another person whose expertise was um, when death visits a Jewish household and what to do. And he has, he, he recently died, I mean, like in the past month. Um, but I said to him, what people need at that particular moment is how-tos, right. and they are not likely to sit down and read a book either. Yeah. However, after things have calmed down and the morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, has, has reached a different level, at that point, yeah. to take it to the next step, yes. But a book, when death has recently occurred, is not what people need. They need how-to tips of what to do if you are following a traditional Jewish tradition. So yes. things like that, um, you know, writing a book may or may not be appropriate. Yeah. And writing a book 
is something to think about what's the purpose being served? Is it serving your own ego as the author? Yeah. Too much too soon is not helpful. Right. Yeah. That's a really great point. I love the example and it shows that we really do need to think about what's the content that we're trying to get across? How helpful are we trying to be? What's the problem that we're trying to solve? Mm -hmm. And I know I spent a, a good period of time as a caregiver, about 18 months, and a, a yeah. tip is all I can stand. And somebody please give me a tip because I, I'm going to be at the end of my rope. Yeah. But I can, I can tell you that when it comes to nonfiction, and that's exactly what we're talking about sure. here, nonfiction continues to sell in print. Yes. So, and as a matter of fact, I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Hyatt or not. I follow mm -hmm. him quite a bit. Uh, and he even said, I'm not, I'm not buying another Kindle book that is nonfiction. Yeah. Because he said that he forgets. I do the same thing. Yeah. I, have, I have the book on my shelf and I forget that I bought it. So sure. he forgets he had it. Then yeah. he, he doesn't read it. He yeah. said, from now on, I'm only buying physical books for mm -hmm. nonfiction. And when you think about it, a nonfiction book really does get consumed. Oh, you yeah. You write in it, you stick post-its in it, you do all this stuff with That's it. True. So it really does benefit you to have multiple formats. And Mike Koenigs, who is a mentor of mine, and actually I took his, his uh, book publishing program, mm -hmm. he has said that he'll have a sales page for a book. Yeah. He'll have free PDF, right? Click here. Yeah. 99 cents for the Kindle version. Right. Click here. $10 for the paperback. He sells all of them. Yep. He said about 30 to 40%, depending on the book, will sell in every format from the same person. Yeah. So people like to have stuff in a variety of formats. They want to consume it when they want to consume it in that's the way right. they want to consume it. So that's really great, great points. And yeah. the other thing too, there's two other points I want to make that are really crucial here. One is that when someone's coming to your expertise, your nonfiction expertise for the first time, think about your own experience. Let's put this in the context of something that is a little brighter than the examples I gave of <laughs> caregiving and of death. Let's just say that you are a newbie to financial investing. Mm -hmm. Up until now, you've known how to make a deposit and a withdrawal from a savings account or from your checking account. However, your money's not working for you. And you keep hearing people say, your money has to work for you. And you're going very quietly into, okay, where do I start investing like an adult, no matter what your chronological age? And this financial planner says, you know, I am putting together a book of 600 pages that has every financial instrument in it, right. every product that's being sold. And you glaze over, and I don't mean you, I mean any of us. Exactly, yeah. The best, best, best way you can serve that newcomer to your expertise, whether it's financial advising, whether it's anything, is small, lots of small bits and pieces, right. so that not only are you really serving that new person, you are also serving your own business because it allows that person to keep coming back for more once they have felt comfortable, and they then are going to trust you more also because you're not giving them an avalanche of all this information at once. Yeah. Yeah. And that I find over the course of time, consistently, the most intelligent people that come to me have the hardest time feeling they really truly are serving somebody if they're only giving them a small amount. But think about it for yourself. We all have things that we're learning for the first time. Right. And for you to give them small amounts first and repetition. Who among us learns something the first time we're exposed to it? Yeah. And a lot of these things are emotionally charged for people. Getting organized is emotionally charged for a lot of people. Oh, yeah. Money certainly is emotionally charged. And think about any of the other things that we've grown up right. and have felt some emotional charge to it. And now the guilt sets in because we do should. I should know this. And the fact is, you don't. 
Right. I mean, a very close friend of mine recently was amazed when I told her that I recently discovered at the tender age of then, <laughs> I first finally learned recently in, in the past year that white vinegar is a cleaning agent. Yep. I didn't know that. My mother, it, she, that wasn't her strong suit. You know, the, the, it just wasn't cleaning, just was not her strong suit. I mean, I grew up fine, but the fact of the matter is, that was a data point and a piece of a detail that I just never learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. And we talk about, and, and <laughs> I'll be kind to you. You know where I'm going to go with this, but I'll be kind to you. We talk about not having expertise and we're not the expert on certain topics. And I recently said to you, and I promise I won't bust you, oh, you. That, that the <laughs> To, the, to a third grader, the fourth grader is God. You know more stuff about different things than I do. And I know more stuff about certain things than you do. Right. And wherever we are on that expertise journey, right. we know stuff that's useful to other people. Yeah. yeah. And we take our own knowledge for granted. Yeah. And it, absolutely. Absolutely. And if it's basic information, you are really being very helpful to somebody who hasn't started the journey yet. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and that whole issue of bite-sized consumable little pieces that step somebody through is, is totally dead on. And when you just think about the, whole, the stress that we're all under, mm -hmm. the pain of life, we, maybe we would love to read the encyclopedia of investing, but can I just please get started and feel good about what I'm doing? That's right. The whole science of goal achievement is, you know, you're seeing more and more information that studies show small steps that are doable that make people feel good, especially yeah. if you're somebody who maybe you've had procrastination as an issue or self-sabotage as an issue. To take that small step and achieve something to yeah. just start and finish that book and feel like I know how to do something now, that's a tremendous gift that you give someone. Absolutely. And, and I, I want to come back around now about that book because I heard the question, and I remember the question being asked. For those of you who are listening and watching, uh, this, and you decide that, yes, it does make sense to write a book, having a manuscript of 50 or 52 tips can become your skeleton to then flesh out right. much more easily into a book than starting from a dead start. And you have something to sell to lay a trail of breadcrumbs that lead up to your publishing that book. Yeah. So, and then the manuscript that you had of the tips, and I keep saying manuscript purposely, because it can be delivered in so many different formats of pixels or print. And the fact is that those different formats can also be a quick start for the people who aren't ready for the book or whose personality styles or lifestyle doesn't really allow for them to sit down and read a book or even listen to a book on, as audio. And you've got something that can be both a promotional tool and a revenue stream leading up to the launch of the book for those people who love the in-depth and have the time and have the inclination. Me, my personality is I'm very bottom line. And I do short stuff. And the how that goes into greater depth. I mean, it's almost a laughable thing that people know who know me, who go, yeah, Paulette and the details, yeah, not so much. <laughs> However, you know, I realize they are important in a lot of situations. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so let's look then at those folks who may be just starting their content journey or just realizing that you know, they've got content everywhere, really. I mean, we've been writing journals and notes and, and articles and blog posts, etc., for quite a long time now. How does somebody decide, and I think this is such a tough spot, you've sped smart people, and I think that this can really be the time when, when you're super smart, it can really get in your way. Oh, yeah. How do you decide what's going to be that first topic that you're going to dive into? 
<laughs> Thank you for asking and for asking that way. One of the biggest challenges that I hear consistently from people is, I have a variety of topics. Which one do I start with? My response to that is, are those topics in any way related? Because if they are, you can do what I did that I now labeled in hindsight after I did it. I found a label for it that I made up. <laughs> that it's a sampler where in my booklet about organizing your business life, there's expectations of what you'd find in there that are all related. So I have one section, or if it were a bigger document, I might call it a book. However, one section that's 10 or 11 tips about paper. How do you organize paper? Another one on filing. How do you label the files? How do you identify what's an appropriate way to label? Another section that's about time. And I can break that down too, because it can be in the positive about something that some people might label as negative, like procrastination. Well, like anything else, is it a tool or is it a weapon? Um, for some of us who are too, imp who are impulsive, I'm not going to put two in front of that, who are impulsive, it really is helpful in a lot of ways for us to take a breath. Mm -hmm so that we don't end up with a leather sandwich, shoe leather sandwich. I mean, you know, because we're just, uh, we're wired to be fast. It's helpful for us to take a breath periodically. Right. So pro pro procrastination, um, how to organize your space, how to make the best use of the space. Are you only doing it laterally and you haven't gone vertical at all? Right. And you've got all this wasted space on the walls and on the ceiling. So things like that. So as far as the topic is concerned, paper, time, space, and breaking those out, I've got about 10 sections in a 16-page booklet. Right. Now, now I focus more on 52 tips, a manuscript of 52 tips. And I'm fascinated at how many of my friends and colleagues, they go, yeah, why 52? And that makes the point about how we just all think how we all think. Right. And 52 does not go smack dab in your face, apparently, until I say, how many weeks are in the year? Yeah. And they go, oh, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. I have a client who did a wonderful publication that he has hired me to pull apart because I gave him some insights about how too much in one booklet, and that he actually had the divisions in there that made it very obvious and very simple to me. I said, you got four booklets here. So I said to him then, and, and it was about money. So the, there was no indication that was obvious about money by any visual identity on his booklet. He had the colors of blue and of an orange, a burnt orange. And I said to him, what color is paper money in the United States? And he looked at me and he went green. And I said, so is there any green any place here that I'm missing? And he went, yeah, right. And the word decisions was part of this title. And I said, you know, I'd make these S's immediately dollar signs. So things like that, right. as far as topic, and as far as visual identification, uh, when people go nuts about, I gotta have a logo. Well, sometimes it's just smacking you right in the face and you don't see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, things like that yeah. are really very interesting to, have somebody else look at to really take your right. good stuff and make it better yeah. because the stuff that he wrote was terrific. Uh, it's not in the writing style that I have found to be very helpful right. when writing a tip, a how-to tip, and that was an easy fix for me, but he didn't have that experience up until now. And yeah. he didn't have the experience of a bunch of things that – my, that my team does have, 
that I do a lot with people where just another pair of eyes and finding what works and finding the kinds of things that uh, are obvious to one person and completely missed yeah. by somebody else. Yeah, yeah. I, and I, I think that we get so close yeah. to our own material and we either can't see our message in there or we miss what to other people is obvious. What do you mean you can't see that? I once had a client ask me to review a sales page. She said, I don't understand why this isn't working. Can you uh -huh. look at it? And I, of course, you know, former copywriter. And I looked at it and I said, you don't actually ask for the sale. Yeah. There's and there were no, no benefit statements in anything this particular client. There, yeah, there's no buy, you know, click here to buy this. I yeah. Said, there's no clear click here and buy it's missing yeah oh yeah yeah you just miss it you just right. you're so obsessed yeah yeah this particular client had just gone through the process as a dad of a person who went off to college and didn't have basics and the college daughter very bright and the adult dad very bright mm -hmm. and a CPA and I said and I rewrote the the cover letter and I said you need to put yourself into the position of the person who's receiving this and that you know when you were going off to college or to school or your first job you thought you knew everything however think about you know, and, and we made a miniature scenario there that the person who was receiving it at the credit union, the marketing person at the credit union, could relate to. And it just never occurred. And believe me, in 1991, when I was doing what I was doing, there were a whole lot of things that never occurred to me that became very obvious as time went on. So I, I want people to know that you just didn't have that experience yet. That's yeah. all. Yeah. You know, the other thing that, that I hear in talking, you talking about how this person had four booklets in them and that you could have a section on this if you have a variety of, of content. Yeah. I, you know, so many of us have what, I think of as referral partners, yep. people who complement what we do, but don't compete with us, right. who, who we're similar to in style and, and we serve the same people, but we, again, we do not specifically compete. Right. Those people are natural partners for contributing to a booklet. And I think you call them a collection of experts. Is that right? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Yep, definitely do. Yeah. So that when there is a theme uh, like reinvention, where maybe a coach and some people who are content developers uh, are, are a perfect match because the coaches don't necessarily have the interest in developing content or marketing it or using it as a marketing tool, and the content developers may not be great coaches. So that's the perfect blending. All right, awesome. So somebody doesn't have to think, oh my God, I got to do this all by myself. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I, I think what, what I'm hearing is, you know, we're, we're all so overwhelmed with just the stuff we have to do in our lives and our business in general. What I'm really hearing is it's not about creating new stuff. It's right. about taking stuff you're already you've already created that you're already sharing That's and right. repackaging and repurposing it in a more consumable way that can right. be an intro into a deeper program it could be that i just need a tip here to get me through whatever i'm working to get through so it's yeah. it, there's no real pressure of now i got something else to do right absolutely and the interesting thing is uh, and i'm so glad you mentioned that when you said earlier about how very many people undervalue their knowledge, right. we're giving tips all day long. You know, go to a party and the inevitable, well, what do you do? Right. And it comes out. I mean, when I was an organizer, when I was a professional organizer and productivity consultant, and I would say what I was doing, and the typical response was, boy, could I use you? 
right? And I would then ask a question of, well, is there something in particular that is a stumbling block for you? And if I use those exact words, they might say, yeah, the pile of papers, I stumble over them all the time. <laughs> and I would give one tip just because I couldn't help myself. You know, take the biggest stuff out of the pile first so you feel good that the pile automatically shrank. That's a tip. Right. And it's amazing how many people just don't think of that. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying things all day long to people, yeah. and people are asking you questions also. Those questions are the basis for tips because your answers are tips. Yeah. Yeah, and, and those mixers – can be so ungodly painful. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, we all, none of us know what to do. So, of course, we collect these business cards. So, what if you gave somebody a booklet mm -hmm. instead of a business card? Mm -hmm. You know, that's a bit more compelling. And you've just created this, I gave you something, it's a gift, right? You, so, yeah. you're leveraging the concept of reciprocity to a degree. That's but nice. also, they can't get rid of you. Or right. a bookmark that has 10 tips on it. I love those. Right. Or, 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 or the pen that you hand out that has your business name and there's one tip on that. I mean, there's, there's endless. Um, I am more than happy to provide an inf infographic that I created that starts tips. Awesome. And not only that, but tips can be used in social media for marketing your own business. Exactly, yeah, yeah. And with your um, URL following it, all of a sudden now you're using those tips to market your own business. But wait, there's more. Mm -hmm. Because whatever we do for our own small businesses, our own solopreneur businesses, concepts are the same in big companies and associations and nonprofits. Anytime we are offering the manuscript, the PDF of 52 tips for signing up for our newsletter, so is a major company doing the same. Would you like to join our mailing list so that you get coupons? Right. We're saving money in buying our products. Join our mailing list and we will send you 52 tips on in the blank. Right. If it's a food, consumer food company, then, you know, 52 tips to save uh, time in making dinner for your family. Right. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. 52 recipes that you can do one a week, and it's exactly the same. And what I just said, in case some of our listeners aren't real clear, is you can rent your content to a big company in exchange for payment for them to use your content. Right. You will still always own that content. They found you as an expert on that content, which immediately gives them credibility. Mm -hmm. An expert is telling us these are ways that we can save time in making food for our family. And you got paid for it, right. and in many cases, very handsomely. Yeah, and that's called licensing. Yes, correct? that's called licensing. Yeah, yeah. And, yep. and that, I think, is a great illustration because it's not just somebody who's listening going, well, I'm not a coach. I'm not a consultant. You can be at anything, and you have knowledge that some other larger organization could be interested in leveraging themselves because now they don't have to do it. <laughs> right. 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 And they don't have a salaried employee that they have to put on an assignment to research and put it together. And for any of the folks who are stay-at-home parents, after leaving corporate jobs, you have a wealth of firsthand information about raising your family right. that any company that is dealing with kid products wants to know yeah you have expertise that you've either attempted to save your sanity or have successfully saved your sanity by coming up with solutions for things right right yeah lots of other people want to know that yeah and, and now we could go on for days 
yep. with this great information because you're obviously such an, an encyclopedia of all the ways <laughs> to make this happen. So let's kind of help people understand, first of all, what it is that you actually do to help them package their information and really leverage it in this way, Paul. Yes. Can you kind of sum, sum that up for us, what you do? Um, some folks are interested in having my company handle the tip writing for them, which we do. Okay, awesome. So if you're concerned about uh, the ability to put together your own content, we can help you with that. Great. Or you can put it together and we can make it look even better for you. Mm -hmm. And that we can do just as a manuscript without it being put into any particular format. And then we've got the idea of your tips on steroids. And by that, we can put it into various delivery formats for you as well. So you have no learning curve at all. Okay. We've got vendors that we've worked with for quite a long time on the print side and on the graphic design side right. and give you output that's anything from pixels to print anything from a PDF to a printed booklet, copies of it. Not so you have to maintain uh, any kind of a big inventory of it. We can do short runs so that it's not a major cash outlay. You don't have to get a second, third, or fourth mortgage on your house. Mm -hmm. um, we've been to this party quite a bit, so yeah. we know how to do that with and for you. We can also set up, and this is kind of cool, we've had this very successfully with a few of our people, our clients, of setting up a subscription service for your content so that it becomes recurring revenue in a variety of ways, okay. smaller or larger packages of what a subscription can be. And certainly the most important part of this is strategic planning. What are you going to do with the content? and where we can have a session with you or multiple sessions. We can have ongoing sessions or spread out so that you have the immediate, the soon, and the later of what to do. Get this up and going, you'll get more later when the time is right, and then long-term. Gee, this sounds like a great idea, but I'm not really ready to do it yet. And you've got step by step when, Technical when and how, and, and we can be available to you, me, firsthand, to help you along on that journey. And certainly to give you that support, that foundation, that cheerleading, um, the I've been in the trenches myself, so I know how this looks, and bounce ideas off you that I may not have thought about because for as many ideas as I've come across, I would never be so bold as to think of there's nothing left to do. There's always more. And to test out your ideas with you and to honor them uh, without my saying, you know, you've totally lost your mind because in my world, that sometimes is a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. Amen. That sounds outstanding. And of course, now you've given everybody this great information and we're going to make sure that we have your contact information. And before I, I let you explain how people can learn more about you and, and uh, get in touch with you, I'm going to sh ask you just this, you know, you've been in business for a long time, obviously. So can you share what's the one thing that you know now that you wish you knew then when you first started? Yes, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier, which in and of itself is an important thing to remember, and that is to be re repetitive. Uh, the one thing is to have choices for people yeah. rather than only one product. People who write books think that they are going to get very wealthy and very well-known very fast, and those varies were important. To have choices, and you have choices, because I have yet to find anybody who's lacking in content. That's never the challenge, right. ever. Yeah. It is, what are you going to do with it? Yeah. All right, Starting no, basic and have choices. Those are the yeah. things that I now know 
Um, and I also, and I know you only asked me for one or thing, <laughs> but uh, to ask questions of people because yeah. no, none of us can ever know all of it. So even as an introvert or an ambivert who leans toward introvert, ask questions. There are no yeah. stupid questions. Yeah. There are no dumb questions. Yeah, and most people love to talk about their business. Oh, yeah. So if you, I mean, I've reached out to some pretty famous people mm -hmm. and asked them, you know, hey, can you tell me about, and have gotten way more of their attention, time, and courtesy than I would have expected. So people are happy to help you if you and ask if the question. for some crazy reason, they are not the kindest in responding, that's an immediate answer for you right there. Right. Thank you ever so much. Have a good life. Bye-bye. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this has been fantastic, and we could go on, I know, for a whole week. So, But our listeners will be happy to know we won't. Let's tell everybody how they can learn more. What's the next best step to connect with you, to learn more about you? Where should they go? Next best step is to go to tipsproducts.com. T-I-P-S-P-R-O-D-U-C-T-S dot com. I do answer my own phone because I have not been able to teach my cat how to do that yet. <laughs> and I live in the Pacific time zone in sunny San Diego. So if you do decide you want to just immediately pick the phone up, keep in mind that voicemail <laughs> is created for a reason. If you happen to call before 9 a.m. Pacific during the week. So I basically keep nine to five hours Pacific time zone. You can email me anytime and you'll find all that information at tipsproducts.com. And I'm happy to talk with you. Great. That's super. And of course, we'll have links to all of that, all those that contact information in the show notes, and you'll be able to access them there. So yes, Paulette does not have a 1-800 call me 24 hours a day line. So thank you so much for spending so much time and sharing so much great information with us tonight, Paulette. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Winnie. Thanks so much. All right, I hope you found that interesting. Be sure to visit winnieanderson.com slash tips to get the show notes, links to the resources mentioned, and to get the handout for this week's episode, which will include your reflection exercise, that's your cocktail exercise, and action step. If you liked what you heard, please leave a great review for the show and this episode on the platform where you consumed it. And please share the episode and the show with your contacts and community. All right, so your cocktail exercise also known as a reflection exercise. No alcohol needs to be involved. Don't drink and drive and don't overindulge. All right, so I want you to think about what people tend to ask you about. There are probably the same questions, you know, that you get asked over and over again. But then I'll bet there are also questions that you wish people would ask you about, you know, things that you think they needed to, to hear about more often. How do you normally offer content? And how could you modify that to help people consume content differently? Where do you normally put your content? And how could you repackage that and increase your discoverability? All right, so your action step. As usual, this is really more than one step. First, look at the next 6 to 12 months and identify what offerings you plan on promoting. Then look at how you could use a tips product to attract clients to that offering. Do a, a content and topic audit on your hard drive and among the things that you've already created. What content do you have that could be broken into tips? If you teach a skill, there are definitely tips in there. And even if you teach a soft skill, there are still the how-tos on how to, to use and apply that skill or learn it, and there, there are how-to tips too. Think about mistakes people make when implementing what you help them with. The solution to those mistakes could probably be shared in a tips booklet. Identify advanced tips to share with past clients to help them do, be, or have even more from the work that you've done together. And remember, most clients don't know how to choose a service provider in your professional specialty area. So you could share tips on just that, on choosing a service professional, and I know they would be really appreciated. 
it would help you attract people who then can recognize that you are the right fit for them and it can also gently repel people by showing them you're not the right fit and it will give them something that they can really use to evaluate other professionals and find that right person for them. So you can really be sending them off with something that is, is really usable. You know how we can make things harder and more complicated than they sometimes can be? Well, we know people need the A to Z on a particular topic, on an issue that we address, but they may only be ready for A to C. And it's better to give less and help people really experience and feel success. They feel good about themselves. They don't have overwhelm. They're going to feel good about you. Then they can come back when they're ready for more. This can support your overall commitment to differentiating yourself as someone who helps people actually achieve their goals. On my site at winnieanderson.com tips, you'll find this episode along with its show notes and resources, including the worksheet that you can use to gather your thoughts, take notes, and make plans based on the information shared in this episode. I really am committed to helping you process and act on the information that's shared on the show. Fans of the show, of course, automatically get the worksheets that get added to the back catalog, as well as the new episodes that are released. So if you'd like to not have to worry about remembering to opt in to get those worksheets, be sure to become a fan of the show at winnieanderson.com slash fans. Are you ready to become a courageous entrepreneur? If you are a mission-driven, introverted coach or consultant who's ready to break free from underachieving, under-earning and playing small, and you're ready to break through to the next level of success, and you're ready to get support, accountability, and guidance you need in a community of like-minded professionals, then consider joining the Courageous Entrepreneur Club. The club is made of small groups of no more than 10 people who are solo professionals and entrepreneurs who receive coaching, accountability, and support from me and from each other as they move forward to come out of hiding, achieve the goals that they otherwise would lose focus on, and generally take their business to the next level of success. Group enrollment happens at specific times during the month. If you want to learn more, go to winnieanderson.com slash join the club. Thanks for joining me for this episode of the Courageous Entrepreneur Show. Remember, you deserve all the success you dream of.